Welcome to Team Help Desk for Outlook. In this demonstration, we will explore how Help Desk Manager can work with Summary Reports Generator and the integrated OLAP Statistics tool. In Outlook 2010, go to the Backstage view and under the Team Help Desk Manager, launch the Summary Reports tool. The Summary Report tool can generate aggregated reports from the support cases based on different time interval. Time interval can be today, or this week, or this month, or last year. You can also specify a time period between two dates. Selecting a time period from this drop-down is the first step in generating a summary report. For example, let us choose this week to extract various reports from the support cases. The second step is to choose what types of reports are to be generated. Here, you have five types of reports. Cases created, cases resolved, cases ongoing, case worked, and cases due. You can choose the relevant report types to be extracted. For this demonstration, I will simply choose all five of them. The next step is to decide which help desk fields are to be included in the report. Here, you have a whole lot of choice of fields to include in your summary report. Most of the fields listed here are straight out of the help desk outlook form. However, there are some special calculated fields, such as Open duration. For an ongoing case, open duration is the interval between case creation and the present time. For a resolved case, open duration is the interval between case creation and case closure. Resolution duration. It is the interval between case creation and case closure time. It is applicable only to resolved cases. For ongoing cases, this will always be zero. Response duration. It is the interval between email receive time and the case creation time. Elapsed duration. For an ongoing case, elapsed duration is the interval between the case due and the present time. For a resolved case, elapsed duration is the interval between the case due and the case closure time. Total cost is the cost of the time spent on resolving a case. This is obtained by multiplying the hourly rate of technician or problem type or department with the time spent on a particular case. Though you could practically include all the fields, the more appropriate way would be to choose the relevant fields of interest that answers to the requirement of the particular reports you intend to build. The tool will also automatically remember your choice of fields in subsequent reporting. Now, I am all set to generate a summary report based on the selected time period. Let us try to understand the summary report that is being generated. At the top of the document, the manager name and the current time are automatically inserted. The table here lists all the chosen fields in this yellow header and those support cases that fulfill the specified time period are arranged in rows and columns. You will notice in the last row, fields that have numeric or currency values are aggregated to give you a subtotal value. As this is a graphical editor, you can easily format the report to your liking and taste. Once you get the desired reporting state, you can save the report or print and share with senior managements. Summary reports play a vital role in keeping managers informed about the state of the support requests and the help desk. So far, we have seen how we can generate many type of summarized reports based on different time interval. 
Now, let us explore a more advanced statistics and reporting option with this integrated OLAP tool. There are two main OLAP controls to work on, namely, the OLAP grid and the OLAP chart. Each of this control is located in a tab. The OLAP grid control is comprised of a multi-dimensional table with expandable nodes. Unique features of this control allows for building the reports of the exceptional level of complexity. This is the cube structure tree and list all the available measures and dimensions fields. Both hierarchies and measures have their own menus. Right click will call the context menu that gives you an option to place the element where you like. You can also filter the selected element or place it to the selected panel. This is the working area where the OLAP slice data is displayed. In its upper part, there is a menu for quick access to the frequently used commands. Now, let us try out some of the predefined views that are included in the stool. You can choose and load a predefined view from the file menu and selecting predefined views. There are more than 30 views listed here, which are specifically designed for Team Help Desk. Here is the technicians and cases report. You can see that the maximum number of cases were assigned to Francis, followed by John Nash. This is the technicians and cost report. Here, we can easily infer that the maximum cost structure is that of Monica's. This is the problems and cases report. Here, we can also drill down the problem category to further get more summarized data on the problem types of the corresponding parent category. We can also modify this default report by adding few more measure fields. In fact, you can use any of the predefined report as a template for building your unique reports by simply adding new dimensions and measures from the cube structure tree. For example, I can add time spent measure to the values area. I will add cost too. If I am only interested in the ongoing cases, I can hide the resolved cases altogether. Let me add some calculated measure fields, like open duration. Let us analyze this same cube on the OLAP chart by clicking the Sync Chart button here. While OLAP Grid allows working with numbers, the OLAP chart allows representing the project data graphically. This gives managers a unique opportunity to analyze help desk data visually dealing with charts rather than numbers, which is much easier to perceive. In this chart, if you move the mouse pointer to the top left corner, you can change the type of representation. Once you are satisfied with the reporting detail, you can opt to save the current state of the statistics to a view file. So, the next time, you can simply open this particular view file to get to the same state of statistics with the same number of fields in the panels and measures. This saves you from building your report from scratch and helping you do more to concentrate on the analysis. Now that we have successfully designed a report, we can save it for future reference or share it with others. If you click this drop-down menu, 
you will have the option to save the data snapshots in various image formats, or to Excel, XML, or PDF documents. Let us try saving some charts too. So, depending on the active view, the saved file would either take the grid data or the chart. You can also print your report to share it with others. Here, you can fine-tune your page and printer settings before printing. As we have seen, the way you can analyze and generate report with the Solap tool is limitless. The simplistic point-and-click nature of this interface ensures that managers can easily achieve the high-level views of information they require in order to extract critical information and intelligence. Additionally, with the SOLAP tool, creating reports destined for different management levels is a simple task and eliminates the manager dependence on IT personnel. This concludes this video tutorial on summary reports and OLAP statistics for Team Help Desk. For more detailed documentation on using this integrated OLAP tool, you can refer to the help manual.